Hey, what is up, mortals? It is, here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 3 Part 6 of What If Stain Trained Deku. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. A month later Izuku sat on his bed with his phone to his ear. His voice strained from the sadness of the topic. Apparently everyone had been crying in the crowd once the announcement of his death had been started. Izuku's voice grew shaky. The last month had been hard on the boy. No one wanted to believe he was gone. He gave everything to make sure he took all for one down with him. To make sure he wouldn't come back and hurt anyone else ever again. Izuku cleared his throat. He tried to maintain his composure, though his hands trembled at the emotional struggle. There was so much he wanted to say. Sadly there was so little that he could. The whole country took the day of his funeral to mourn him. Barely anything was open. Not many people were really upset about it though. All Might was dead, officially in the ground. His mouth curled into a sad smile. The city put up a statue in the center with his name. And the statement, heroes will always come, for anyone can become a hero. Tears streamed down his face. The phrase had only reminded him of the day he met All Might, and of the day he first trained with Stain. Both days after so long of fearing the possible truth, both had given him hope. They made him believe that even he, a quirkless boy, could become a hero. School was shut down that week too. They had lost the number one hero, and a teacher so they needed to figure out a lot. They also added new security measures after all the villain attacks lately. He took a deep breath to hold himself together. His mom who sat next to him, rubbed his back gently to try to help soothe her still mourning son. She knew the death would hit him hard, but nowhere near as hard as it clearly had. She wished to ask him more about it, though she knew her little boy needed time to breathe. From what the teachers said he very likely had seen things that night that could have heavily traumatized him. Given this fact she knew a sense of normalcy was needed, in conjunction with that, and the request of the teachers she had begrudgingly agreed to let him stay at the dorms. It had been soon after Izuku had only started to get better. The boy had still been hidden away in his room. It had taken everything in the mother's will to not slam a door in their faces that day when they asked. After Izuku went back he seemed to slowly get a little better with each day. She was glad now that she had made the choice to say yes. She still feared the day that those villains may come back for her son and the other students again. Izuku's hand trembled with all the built-up emotion. His grip on the phone tightened slowly. A wide smile grew upon his face. It beamed like a bright light in a shroud of darkness. He had lost his mentors that day, but their words had said that night had done so much good. They had inspired so many people to try harder to become true heroes. Less of the pros spent their time flirting with civilians or looked for fame. Applications to hero academies were at an all-time high, and much to the disapproval of the law enforcement, so were vigilantes. There was still much work to do but this was more than what most could have hoped for. If his mentors could see what came of their actions, he knew they would look at it all with pride. A lot of people are afraid because All Might is gone, but with so many pro heroes taking their roles more seriously, along with kids all around the city signing up for hero academies, everyone still has so much to hope for. He wiped the tears from his face. Determination filled his eyes, as did confidence and pride. Most had changed their ways publicly due to All Might's words and actions, though many who took Stain's words as inspiration became vigilantes who aimed to change the world. His mentors once small group now stood plentiful. All of them did their best to save as many people as they could every day and night. Even the odd toga girl had joined them. Izuku only knew this due to Bakugo. The boy had came in one day to class and complained about the freak. Toga had apparently found him on his way to school just to tell him how she would become a true hero like him. She even talked about how she would change the world one day for people like her. Izuku hadn't really thought someone as far gone as the blood-centric girl would be so willing to work so hard to become a hero. He figured more had gone on between her and Bakugu that night. It wasn't for him to pester about just to learn more so he left it be. He was honestly just glad to have seen proof of a possibility that even villains could become heroes. True heroes or not, to become a hero when once being a villain was certainly a start. Tomorrow we'll be taking our provisional license exam since it got delayed due to recent events. There's even a new rule that students need to stay on campus during the school year to better protect us all. I finished moving in a little while ago besides a few odds and ends. Some of the students have to finish moving into the dorms too. Izuku explained then took a moment to let all this sit in with himself as well. I don't know if this message will reach you, but I wanted to try to catch you up with some stuff finally after everything that happened recently. Bye dad. Izuku hung up and lowered the phone. He looked to his mother who looked back at him with proud, yet nervous eyes. I'll be okay mom. Promise. He smiled with a softness to it. You better young man. No hero could ever replace my little boy. His mother pulled him into a hug and held it for a while before she let go. Now get going, don't you have an exam to train for? Izuku nodded confidently to his mother. He gently wiped the tears from her cheeks with his thumbs, then placed a kiss on her forehead. He knew how rough this all had been on her. 
He felt guilty for putting her though so much. She had every right to ask him to stop yet she didn't. She instead let him train further to become a hero. He was proud to have such a loving mother who supported his dreams, even as dangerous as his were. Izuku left the house and grabbed his bag with the last of his odds and ends he had forgotten. Some parents hadn't allowed their children to stay on campus like his mother had. Not all parents could get behind allowing their children to go to a school with the recent history theirs had, let alone to stay there during the school year. Thankfully for those students some were still allowed to continue their dreams of becoming heroes, just not at UA. All Might's actions were enough to inspire the parents to meet their children halfway by a transfer of schools. Given UAS status, most schools were more than willing to accept students from the top school around, especially when the whole world now knew some of these students may have real in-person experience with villains. Most of them didn't, but the rumors were still a good selling point for those trying to transfer out. The new dorms were pretty cramped still due to the many who still stuck around. The rule was only two students per room. The students were even allowed to pick their roommates so long as they were in the same class and the same gender. Izuku laughed to himself. He thought back to when Bakugu chose his roommate. He had been quick to pick Kurashima out of everyone else. He even made a big deal to tell everyone why, as simple as it was. He's one of the few idiots here I can remotely stand. Everyone had just ended up staring at him so he left the room. He had seemed pleased no one argued with his choice, nor questioned it. Ida and Izuku ended up in the same room. Both had wanted to make sure neither did anything too outlandish in the future like they had for Bakugu, or Ida's brother. Ad and they figured the other to be a good possible roommate. After all they had similar training and study methods. Izuku would be lying if he claimed the wake-up calls Ida performed to ensure they wouldn't be late for class, weren't getting a tad old. He hadn't been late to a single class since so that was good. Even though he had never been late to a class prior to their room sharing, he and Ida had actually planned on training and studying for the exam together this evening, which he was actually admittedly running late for. Hiroraka had overheard them talking about it the other day. She even asked to join. They happily permitted her to join them. Izuku and the others that had gone after Bakugu that night had been side-eyed a bit for a while after. Officially on the books none of them had been there. The others suspected otherwise, that they had left to save him that night behind everyone's backs. The teacher's comments to them here and there had given enough to cause suspicion and questions to rise up. The tension finally seemed to lift a bit by now. Not totally, but some. Hiroraka had been one of the many who had been very upset about how they left without a word to help Bakugu though mostly due to not asking any of the others for help. Masui on the other hand had been one of the top people to be truly upset. She had told them that such acts were no better than what villains did by disobeying the rules. This didn't go over well for her, nor those who protested against her. The whole thing had caused a major argument amongst everyone with little closure at the end. She still was upset to this day, but at least she recently had started to talk to them again. It was hard to tell if she had been more upset at their actions or how she had addressed her feelings. Izuku at the end of the day was just glad things were slowly mending with each other. The young boy looked towards the dorms where Ida stood with crossed arms. If his face didn't scream displeased the tapping of his foot did, Uraraka stood next to him, and offered a rather awkward wave to Izuku. Ikuku gave an awkward smile in return. He felt bad about having made them wait. He felt even worse for leaving Uraraka to deal with a displeased Ida. Out of the corner of his eye he spotted Bakugu. The blonde stared him down with serious eyes. The moment Izuku looked over fully, Bakugu motioned behind him with a sway of his head to signal for Izuku to follow. Bakugu wasted no time after the signal. The moment he was certain Izuku understood had walked away. Izuku blinked but sent his own signal to Ida and Yuraka that he would be just a moment longer. He jogged after Bakugu to not fall behind. Ida's jaw hit the ground at the sudden last-minute turn from them. Izuku made. Ida moved to intercept Izuku in order lecture him. Yuraka quickly stopped him with a gentle grab of his wrist. The young woman pointed to Bakugu who slipped from view followed by Izuku right as she pointed. Ida decided to allow them to chat without interruption upon seeing Bakugu. The two hadn't seemed to talk about the night they saved Bakugu. In fact the two seemed to avoid the topic when it came up around the other. It would be best to let them finally talk it all out, then promptly lecture the young man about punctuality. Izuku slowed to a stop in the small clearing Bakugu had led him to. Bakugu looked at his childhood best friend with his hands tucked into his pockets. Izuku's brows frowned at the lack of hostility in his stance. Even casual conversations had some hostility in his body language usually, but not his time. You cried like a baby, he said flatly, towards the death of a stranger, and again at what All Might said before he was even announced dead. A gentle breeze danced between the two. The subject was about the death of his mentors, not just some random subject. It was about something Bakugu knew was a serious one. One that was partly about the hero they both had idolized since they were children. Explain before I lose my patience, you stupid Deku. His words were harsh but the way he asked showed the compassion. 
His longtime friend clearly found it hard to share openly. Izuku wanted to make him promise not to share before he shared the long-standing secret between him and All Might. He knew though such a request would likely be deemed an insult to Bakugo, not due to a refusal to share right away, but the idea of Izuku possibly holding such low trust for him. The two had been friends for so long. Izuku had also risked his life to save Bakugo twice now, so to assume Bakugo would just openly share a secret so big would surely be seen as an insult. So Izuku explained. He told Bakugo about how he met Stain, how he was trained by him, how such actions led him to have the confidence to apply to UA, and how his actions that saved Bakugo from the sludge villain had led All Might to deem him worthy to become his successor. He explained how one for all worked, and how he had to keep it a secret from everyone at All Might's request. From there Bakugo was able to piece the rest of the story together. The boy clenched his fists while he took it all in. After a moment his fist relaxed. His eyes lifted to Izuku's. The momentary rage that built up from all the new information seemed to die at least mostly down just as quickly as it built up. Izuku had become the successor to the hero he himself had idolized for so long. The whole thing was prompted by the situation that he couldn't get out of himself. The thought frustrated him greatly. Though this only changed a few things to the young blonde, Bakugo walked up to Izuku and pushed his fist into his shoulder. Izuku's shoulder slightly shifted back from the push. The two locked eyes silently for a moment. I will surpass you one day, but only after you reach number one. His eyes looked serious. So don't you dare die until you reach number one, and I surpass you. Got it, nerd. Izuku smirked then stepped back from the fist. Izuku brought his own fist up, then touched his knuckles to Bakugu's. Wouldn't dream of it catching. Bakugu let a mild grin grow on his face towards the boy. He held his fist to Izuku's to let the moment set in. He then turned to leave. Izuku slowly lowered his fist and relaxed it at his side. He watched Bakugu leave a grin still planted on his face firmly. He had no doubt in his mind that Bakugu would quickly go back to his shouty self after this. Change took time after all. His heart warmed at the fact he and his childhood friend could have a moment like this together. Izuku thought of his mentor's deaths. It tore him apart inside every time he thought about it. Their deaths were sad, but truly had caused many great things. Izuku made his way back to the other two. Ida promptly shooed him towards the training grounds. He was sure to lead the way while he lectured him. Izuku let him go off all he wished. During this he glanced at Yuraka who smiled softly at him. Her eyes filled with the old warmth and compassion it had before the fights about the rescue occurred. Izuku happily smiled back with a warm smile. He had missed these moments between the three of them. Things were majorly different since those first days at UA. They would continue to grow even further so as well. This he was certain of. He didn't worry though. At the end of the day heroes would always win. There would always be heroes to fight the villains. After all, anyone could be a hero. This he was also certain of. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all-around fantastic place to be. Rather you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.